Now let's get one thing straight before we dive in here. I do not support the White Nationalist Party. A lot of alt furry rhetoric or really anything in the alt category. I'm very liberal and very, very feminist. First or second wave, in fact. I am probably a Nazi's worst nightmare. I'm pansexual and I have a lot of opinions. So before we jump in here, please bear in mind all of that information before you go to the comments section. I would strongly encourage you to watch this all the way through before posting your comment. I'm not going to disable comments on this video. I fully understand that this title will probably paint a huge target on my back and that is fine. I am only offering this opinion, this idea, after having been really transformed by a lot of different TED Talks and actually speaking to people who have had some experience with this. So like I said, bear in mind that this is just an idea, this is just an opinion, you are welcome to disagree and punch as many Nazis as you want, but this is just an alternative approach that I think could have a lot of positive benefits. Now let's jump in. We're gonna start this story with a man by the name of Daryl Davis. He's an American R&B and blues musician, an author, an actor, and a band leader. He was born in 1958, and he was very well known for his amazing boogie-woogie piano styles. For those who don't know what that is, Google it. So why is Daryl important? Why is Daryl an interesting person to bring into the conversation of why maybe we shouldn't punch Nazis? Well, there's something about Daryl that you should probably know. Daryl was born in Chicago, Illinois, and was the son of a Department State Foreign Service officer, which gives him a very, very broad world view. He moved around the globe with his parents and during childhood, and in his TED Talk he mentions the first time he ever experienced extreme racism was when he was actually with a Cub Scout troop in Belmont, Massachusetts, where while he was carrying a flag, many people began to throw rocks at him because of the color of his skin. Now many people in America who are of color experience racism all the time. It's unfortunate and it's terrible. However, this experience left Daryl with a very different outlook on the world. Having traveled so much, having had so many experiences, Daryl wanted to know why. And this is something that would continue to be a huge part of who he became and so forth. Basically, he wanted to know the why of the hate. He wanted to understand the root. He wanted to understand its cause. He wanted to know why did people hate him for the color of his skin. When Daryl was a bit older, he actually decided to do the absolute unthinkable. Something that no one would ever have thought to do. Daryl decided to figure out why the KKK hated him. His first experience with the KKK initially came around 1983 when he was playing some music at a predominantly white bar when one of the patrons came up to him and said it was the first time he'd heard a black man play as well as Jerry Lee Lewis, which was an interesting experience. After talking to this man a bit more, it became clear to him that Daryl was seeing a bit of a mixed message there. This man who didn't see black men as equal to white men had essentially acknowledged him as someone with a lot of talent, and that really drove him to do something truly insane. A few years later, Daryl decided he wanted to get to the root cause of why the Klan did not see other people as equal. Something that had really been on the top of his mind ever since someone threw a rock at him that one time when he was a Cub Scout. So he did something that by today's standards would be considered absolute lunacy, insanity absolutely ridiculous. Who, who would possibly think of doing something this insane? What did he do? 
he decided he wanted to interview clan members and write a book on the subject. And not just interview over the phone, interview face to face. So sure enough, he had his secretary call a grand dragon of the KKK in Maryland, Roger Kelly, and decided to try to interview him in a motel. However, he decided not to mention his race over the phone, not to disclose. He wanted Roger Kelly to come in as if he was meeting with an equal and see what would happen when they met in person. Most people would expect that it would result in arguing, yelling, shouting. That is what most of us assume would happen in the situation. However, that's not what happened. After meeting Roger Kelly and having a brief, tense moment where all parties were on edge, something miraculous happened. Daryl and Roger became friends. Not immediately, mind you, it took some time, but it soon began to be regular custom that Roger would come to Daryl's house. Daryl would go to Roger's house. Roger would invite Daryl to clan rallies, and Daryl went. He was dead set on understanding where this hatred came from and talking to members of this community that hated the color of his skin. This went on for years. After talking and talking and understanding and listening, something that many clan leaders, I guess, are, were not used to having from the other side, Daryl was able to get very, very close with many of the key members. Why is this important? Well, after spending so much time and listening to so many people, something even more miraculous happened. Roger Kelly left the KKK. So what can we learn from this experience? What can we take from what Daryl did and apply it to how we approach Nazis, alt furs, in today's society. Now something to understand about the approach that Daryl took when trying to confront hatred head on is where some of that hatred stemmed from. Understanding why some of these people would have such egregious views, why they'd have such extreme views, and why they were so vocal about it. Something that Daryl saw early on was the idea and concept of respect, of understanding, of coming together to talk face to face. In today's society, so much is online that we have been empowered to hide behind avatars. We can tweet into the void. We can block the voices of those that we don't agree with, and we can genuinely avoid what we don't want to hear. By meeting members of the KKK in person, what Daryl essentially took away from this movement was the ability to ignore the other point of view. Now, his approach was radical. Many people today would not go to a Klan rally to try and convince Klan members that they are wrong. That's not something people today would ever dream of. But Daryl did it as a black man to a group of KKK members who genuinely hated the color of his skin and his race. Now something that Daryl employed that many, many would never dream of even thinking about doing was listening. Sitting, talking, and listening. Hearing the reasons, hearing the backstories, the experiences, and what led to many of these people deciding to join such a powerful hate group. Why? Why would you join that? In doing this, he was able to get close to a Grand Dragon, one of the highest, well, probably not the highest, I don't know much about the party, but one of the highest members. And through careful years of cultivating a friendship, understanding, and mutual respect, he was able to talk a Grand Dragon out of the White Nationalist Party. Take a minute to let that sink in. A black man, attended KKK rallies and was able to get a high-ranking member out of the white nationalist party through understanding, respect, and communication. That is a massive feat. That is a pure stroke of genius. And in listening to his TED talk, it got me thinking about how many furries approach alt furries, furry raiders. You're run-of-the-mill conservatives. And it got me thinking about how some of us word 
our arguments online. How we approach people with views different than our own online. And how we could genuinely be doing better. A lot of furries now have the mindset of punch Nazi furs. Let's break that down. Before we have even tried to communicate with furries with a different idea than our own, we've already come out with something that is inherently violent, aggressive, threatening. I'm not innocent from this, by the way. I have definitely retweeted Punch Nazi Furs before. I have definitely been extremely aggressive online, but after watching this incredible TED Talk, it got me thinking. I'm not bringing respect to the table. I'm not listening. I'm not trying to hear what some of these furries are genuinely upset about. And maybe rather than fixing the problem, it's only making it worse. Maybe what we should be doing is trying to listen, trying to understand why, why they have this opinion, why they're in these groups. Break that down and try to show some respect for what they feel and they perceive. Now, the key to how Daryl was able to get this man out of such a powerful hate group was through years of showcasing that maybe many of these feelings that he had were inherently hypocritical. If you constantly think that someone is lesser than you, not worthy of your respect or your time or attention, the most powerful way to completely disarm that idea is by proving them wrong. Now, by proving them wrong, I don't mean insulting their intelligence, ridiculing them, calling them names, or shutting out their voice entirely with a block list. What I mean is by showing them the hypocrisy in that idea, showing them that actually, no, not all black men are lesser than you. Actually, no, you are capable of mutually respecting someone that you say is lesser than you through years and years of work. Now, I'm not saying we should all try to befriend alt furs immediately and become BFFs and magically everything's going to be solved. That, what he accomplished was no small feat. That took work. And I don't think any of us could really dedicate to that kind of endeavor. If you can, hey, more power to you. I don't think that's realistic. However, what we could try and do is be more open to listening to some of the complaints that come out. Be open to listening to some of the gripes that these people have and trying to understand where it comes from and where potentially we could make them see some of the hypocrisy in what they believe. If one of the beliefs is all leftist furries are fascist and don't want your opinion, will shut down your cons because you try to attend, try to silence you, erase that belief. Stop using block lists. Stop ridiculing people when they try to speak to you. Try to have civil discussions. Try to understand their perspective, contextualize it, think about it, and then try to offer your perspective in a respectful manner. I'm not saying we should let the biggest hate mongers in the community come to cons. But what I am saying is before we try to proactively ban everyone from one ideology, maybe we should take a minute to try to understand why they have it and see if we can disarm it before it's actually an issue. Disarm it through respect, through communication, through treating them like, dare I say it, human beings. Because if you feel threatened, if you feel attacked, and if you feel ostracized, you're going to get angry. You're going to get into a corner and you're going to fight back. And I think that is what we're seeing the most of. We should try to show some compassion. We should try to talk people out of these groups that are inherently harmful. We should try to show them the hypocrisy and what they may believe. If they believe that all leftist furries are SJWs that will ridicule them on Twitter and then block them, we should stop. We should try to listen to them. We should try to engage respectfully. If after that they decide to be terrible to you, by all means, block them. That's what the block feature is there for. But before we institute a preemptive block list, maybe we should take the time to listen and see where we as individuals can do better. 
can do good, can do amazing things for the community. Stop drama before it happens. Take away what threatens them, what makes them feel inferior, and instead give them respect that makes them perhaps not hold those views anymore. See that those views may have no grounds. See that those views may not be valid anymore because it's not there anymore. Now, if after all this, you still want to punch a Nazi, I can't stop you. But what I'd like to challenge some of my viewers to do is listen. Before you throw your fist, try and listen and understand why they have angered you so much to throw your fist. Try and understand where some of that pain is coming from, some of that anger is coming from. I would encourage most people to think before they act and listen before they punch. Anyways, I know this was a very long video. Thank you for sticking through to the end. Like I said, I'm not gonna disable the comments, so if you wanna come at me, come at me. But this is something that I found very transformative and I wanted to share with you. Anyways, have a lovely day. Bye!